1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial, and I'm Patrick Teo. A witness in the 1MDB trial told the court that funds auditor KPMG had insisted on meeting with Najib Razak with regards to its 2.3 billion US dollar investment before signing off on its 2013 financial statement. Instead of taking the request to the Prime Minister's office, former 1MDB Chief Financial Officer Azmi Tahir told the court that he informed businessman Low Tech Joe, better known as Joe Low, about KPMG's request. <laughs> Najib's 1MDB trial resumed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court today, Wednesday, April 20th. Najib is standing trial for graft involving 2.28 billion ringgit in 1MDB funds. He faces 25 charges, 4 for abuse of power and 21 for money laundering, for offences committed between 2011 and 2013. Today, Azmi, the prosecution trial's 12th witness, told defence lawyer Wan Aizuddin Wan Muhammad during cross-examination that Ahmad Nasri Abdul Wahab, a partner at KPMG, had requested to meet with Najib sometime in November 2013. Azmi said KPMG insisted on meeting Najib despite the 1MDB management doing their best to provide information regarding 1MDB's investments. The witness said Nasri informed him that KPMG will only sign off on the 2013 financial statement after hearing from Najib that the 2.3 billion US dollar investment held in Brazen Sky Limited was secure. What was your reaction when you heard the request from KPMG? One Aizuddin asked. I was surprised and I asked him why they wanted to meet the Prime Minister. Asmi replied. Nasri explained that KPMG wanted to hear from Najib, who is the sole shareholder of 1MDB, on the 2.3 billion US dollar investment and know that everything is okay, Asmi added. If Najib said everything was okay, then KPMG would sign off, Asmi added. If you recall, KPMG refused to sign on the 2013 financial statement because it was not satisfied with information furnished by 1MDB's management and board regarding its investments abroad. Previously, Auditor Ernst & Young were also replaced, ironically by KPMG, because it had refused to sign off on a financial statement. It turns out that KPMG had reasons to be worried Brazen Sky Limited, in fact, did not hold any funds, merely worthless promissory notes said to be worth 2.3 billion US dollars. Following the request from KPMG, Azmi told the court that he informed Joe Lowe about the auditor wanting to meet Najib. Asmi said Joe Lowe wanted to know why KPMG was adamant to meet Najib instead of accepting information furnished by the board. I told Joe Lowe that KPMG explained that if the meeting with Najib was satisfactory, then they would sign off the 2013 financial statement, Asmi explained. But Joe Lowe sounded skeptical, Asmi said. He kept asking me, sure. I replied, Yes, Azmi said. One Aizuddin then asked Azmi why he had to inform Joe Lowe about KPMG's request to meet Najib instead of the latter's late principal private secretary, Azlin Alias. Azmi responded saying that the 1MDB management generally provided updates to Joe Lowe, especially when it comes to matters that deal with the Prime Minister. None of us dealt with the Prime Minister's office. It was through Joe Lowe, Asmi told the court. 
Azmay then confirmed that a meeting between KPMG and Najib took place on December 15, 2013 at his Langa Duta residence. Jolo was also present. Previously, another 1MDB witness, former 1MDB Chief Executive Officer Sharo Azral Ibrahim Haumi, said that Brazen Sky Limited was set up by Joe Lowe and his associates as part of a ruse to divert 1MDB investments in Petro Saudi Oil Services Limited. The meeting with KPMG was, however, not fruitful. Najib wasn't able to convince KPMG that all was well with the company. And in the end, KPMG never signed off on the 2013 financial statement. Azmi, who was also present at the meeting, said Najib didn't okay the details furnished by the board. Those words did not come from the former Prime Minister, Azmi said. Since KPMG refused to sign off, it was eventually replaced by Deloitte. Azmi today said that Deloitte was the only one of the big four international auditing firms that was willing to audit 1MDB in 2013. Azmi said that neither Najib nor Jolo interfered in the selection of the new auditor. We were already scrambling on our own to find an auditor after the impasse with KPMG as 1MDB's 2013 audit was already overdue, Azmi said. It was former 1MDB CEO Muhammad Hazem Abdurrahman who directed him to look for another auditor, Asmi added. And with that, the proceeding ended for the day. The trial will continue tomorrow. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by The Malaysian Insight. It was written by Ravin Palanisami, and I'm Patrick Teo. <laughs>